Okay, so you saw me do something here that I normally don't do, and I, I want you to see that. I, I use this single door to create another door over here, right? And, and I go through these exercises sometimes, but I want you guys to kind of think your way through certain things. I probably wouldn't put two single doors on there like that. That wouldn't make sense, would it? What could I do to remedy that? Let's go in and let's go to insert and let's go to load family. Revit has under its commercial doors, right? So under imperial doors and then commercial, it has an exterior double to light, right? And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get a, um, a seven foot by seven foot door double door right which means I know if I had two three foot doors that's going to be six foot wide but I'm going to go for on this exit seven feet because if I had a stream of people coming through this lobby I would probably want to make sure of what I probably want to make sure there was plenty enough room for those doors to open and swing out right because again I only need the panic bar and, and right now I'm actually showing that I only need the panic bar on the inside on the outside I could use something different but I wouldn't want to use a knob and why wouldn't I want to have a knob well I wouldn't want someone that maybe had a disability not to be able to open this door although to be honest one of the things that we're probably going to put out here we're going to show and do a little detail of later is a, as an automatic door opener and kind of figure out where we place that is going to be another one of our challenges too okay so let's go ahead and fix this I've, I've in, imported that door and if I go over to architecture and doors, you know, there's that double 84 by 84. So what I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Don't need those right now. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say door and I'm going to place this door right here. Right. And as I come in here, I'm going to say, hmm, you know, maybe I can get that a little closer. Maybe that can be four foot. Right. Oh, that's a little too close. Maybe that needs to be five foot. Oh, wow. That's really super close. This would never fly, people. Let me tell you that right now. And I wanted you to see that um, this this revolving door is going to be a little too large at eight foot for us to fit a seven foot door. So what can we do? Let's go back. Let's uh, insert and let's load family. And let's say um, let's go back to the commercial doors and we'll go to the um, exterior to double light, right? And I'm gonna say, give me the six foot wide by seven foot tall door, right? And now that I'm in here, I can go in here and say, give me the 72 by 84. That door's a little smaller. And now I can probably change that dimension to four foot there and be okay. And then I can just go here and say, what? Mirror off of the center door. And now I've got my other door in there. So now in 3D, I've got the levers that I want, right? Someone can pull that. They don't have to turn that to get in. I've got my panic bars. If I do a little section through the lobby, I can see I've got, and I'll go ahead and flip this around and pull this back uh, and go to view. And I have to go to fine to start seeing certain things. There's my panic bars and I can go to shade it too. So now I've got this control point of entry. I've got the revolving door and then I've got two what? Two panic bars on doors on either side that are more than adequate, adequately going to likely meet my need for um, egress as far as door sizes to get out. Now, what's interesting too, although you really wouldn't consider a revolving door a point of egress, um, it's more of a control point coming in the building. There are most re revolving doors are required for their panels inside the door to collapse so that in a serious situation, if there were a lot of people streaming out of the lobby, those leafs would collapse, okay? Um, the, the leafs would collapse and they would cause the uh, panels to go outward and people could get out that way. But ideally, that's not the way you'd want to get out of a building, all right? So we've got those doors. And so right now, we're, we're, we're doing good on being covered for exit doors now um, let's let's develop this space over here right now let's go ahead and put another room in okay 
This is what we have to start doing. We have to start developing our, our space. So we're going to call this um, uh, store, or we're going to call it cafe store. Okay? So that's our cafe store right there. And then over here, this next space, let's go ahead and develop that. This is going to be R E C. I hope I spelled receiving wrong. I before E except after C, right? So R E C E I V I N G. I believe that's spelled right. Or maybe not now that I'm looking at it. I'll have to check that during the break. Revit unfortunately doesn't do spell checks for you when you place rooms. So now we're starting to label these rooms. We get these three rooms labeled. And then we come in here and we start thinking about this space on the first floor. And what I would imagine on the first floor of this building, we're going to end up having the kinds of spaces. We're probably not going to have offices down here, but we probably are going to have we, we are going to have a large laboratory in here. But the next thing we have to do, we have to kind of open up this space back here to kind of let people through. Well, how do we want to do that? Because honestly here, people, and we're going to talk about this in our lecture on Tuesday, but right here on this edge of this building where this wall is, we're going to have a, a separation joint. And we'll start talking about those things in Chapter 9. Originally, we were going to start doing chapter nine today, but I wanted to kind of get in and talk about the building first so that when we go back to looking at this, you're gonna see that this lower area and this upper area are essentially two different buildings. And we've gotta have a separation joint in there so that we can define that. And we'll start talking about that Tuesday. You'll, you'll understand it. Then when we jump back into the model, it'll make all that much more sense, okay? Still got a lot of work to do on this lower half of the building. So anyway, let's go into our ground floor and let's flip this section around, right? We're going to flip this around and pull it past this wall. And then I'm going to uh, right click and say, go to view. And while I'm in this view, we've got to essentially cut a hole in this building so that we can pass through. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hover here and I'm going to hit tab, 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 and see if I can click. Oh, I can't click on that. What do I do? I go back to my 3D view, and I click on that wall. And then I go back to my section six. And while I'm in here, I say I want to do what? I want to edit the profile of that wall. So I'm going to click right there. And essentially, I am going to come in here, and I'm going to draw a line. And I'll probably, let me start about two feet from the center of that wall. Maybe, maybe even three feet from the center of that wall. And I'm going to go up almost nine feet. I'm going to go up nine feet. I'm going to go over, right? For right now, I'll go over. Let's see. You know what? Let's place this other line. Three feet, right? Just like the other one. And then I'm going to draw that there, right? And I'm going to check that again. That's three feet. That's three feet, so I'm good there now. And I have a symmetrical opening. What I'm going to do in this instance, I'm going to split this element. I'm going to split this wall element right here, right? So now I've got a line here and a line here for that wall profile. So now all I have to do is go up to trim, extend the corner, click here and here. Then I can click here and here. And then I can say finish. And now I've got a hole in this wall that's going to allow me to go from what? From this lobby into this other portion of the building. Now let's go back to this and talk about the height of it for a second. In here right now, if I did a dimension, you'd see I have nine foot. Now I didn't arbitrarily just throw that nine foot in there, but... If you think about it, most openings on doors are eight foot, right? And what I have to be careful of, if I cut a hole in this wall, that I'm not creating too much of a what? Remember, what kind of wall is this primary wall here? If we look at it in 3D, 
It's a bearing wall, right? And look at it. I have all of these different what? All of these floor joists, these metal floor joists that are essentially, if I go back here, if I look at them, they are basically sitting inside of this wall. So I have to be very, very careful, extremely careful how high I make this opening, how much support I take out of here. And then I have to decide, do I have to support under here? Is this too tall? That's a question our structural engineer would answer for us. But what I'm going to tell you is I wanted you to see all that so that when you see I come in here right now, right, I'm going to come in here and delete this. I'm going to go back into that wall profile. I'm going to edit the profile. I'm going to say, make this eight foot. And I can tell you from my personal experience, that's about as large as of opening that you want to cut in a bearing wall. And a lot of it depends on the height and the dimensions of it, but we're pretty much going to be safe with that eight foot. And what we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to have a steel lintel that's going to go through here that's going to help support all of this area, bearing area that's missing below, okay? So uh, we'll, again, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go into detail things later because we're going to have to create a condition there. But that eight foot opening is going to do pretty well for you. So again, um, if you go and edit the profile, this is three foot from the center of that wall. That's three foot from the center of that wall. And this opening is essentially eight feet tall. Okay. And we'll pick back up in the next video.